Oh, my goodness gracious. It's Thursday, January 20th at noon. And this is news that you can use from YAA with your dear friends, Zach and Ray, live and in person from our downtown studios in Bethesda, Maryland. Okay, so we don't have a studio, but we are in, in downtown Bethesda. Well, Bethesda doesn't really have a down. We're in Bethesda. There you have it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to kick things off today with. Really, you got to be kidding me. Really? Today's oh, really? show is me. solely going to be. No, not solely. We're going to, you know us, we'll deviate. I wanted to take our attention and put it towards this article from Jalopnik. It is incredible what this one used car dealership is doing in it. And it's very indicative of what's going on in the market before we do. Yes. Tim's in the house. Happy Friday Eve. Jordan's here. Justice is here with us. Mario, thanks for being here. Neil's here with us. Jordan mentioning Rivian stock down half. Oh, we wanted to take a moment and look at that. Jim's in the house with us. Jay Nagami, Neil, Karina as well. Thanks everyone seems for being like here. The, it seems like the normal <clears throat> cast of characters is uh, is uh, is uh, watching today's uh, live stream uh, with a bated breath. We appreciate you guys being yeah. here. Leon here, Larry Ari's here with yeah. us. Dog yeah. breath as well. Going to pull that. Well, I mean, some kind of bated breath. It could be dog breath. Dog breath. Love yeah. That. All right, pops. I've been to San Antonio, a lovely town. Here we go. This yes. article was on Jalopnik, and it yes. caught my attention because the title of it was "Welcome to Used Car Buying Hell." Well, it's only used car buying hell if you actually go to this dealership. This dealership is incredible. I encourage everyone to take. If you get the article, um, who's who's the author? Yeah, Lawrence. Lawrence writes a lot of really interesting pieces over on Jalopnik. Really like it. He is uh, talking about dealership in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Yes, yes, it's a town that's uh, named after Steve Carlisle, the president of North American Operations for General. Okay, it's Carlisle. So I clicked on it. So here we go. We're going to take yeah. a peek at what's going on at Platinum pre-owned in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. This oh, is what I happens. Love, I love the panda head on the. Uh... The, the title of today's stream is like, here's how car dealerships rip you off. Like, the truth. Okay. We're going to walk you through it. Yeah. It's not it's not that complex yeah. by now. It's 2022. Yeah. Everyone knows this. But anyway. Yeah, can, can, I, can I put an addendum to that? Yeah, put an addendum. Yeah, okay. How car dealerships rip you off is is by you letting them. Yeah, yeah. That's why we As exist. the consumer. That's why we exist. You have to. If they can't do it if you don't let them. Did you just, did you just pick your nail? No. Know. What is that? No. No. That, yeah. No, that's not. Yeah. Jeez. One second. Yeah. Okay. You know, this is your desktop, not mine. <laughs> so here's what happens when you go to Platinum Pre-Owned. We're going to just continue to website. Okay? Yeah. We're also going to get rid of whomever that is down there. Yeah. So if you go to their pre-owned inventory, they've yeah. done an incredible job yes. stocking up. They actually have 239 vehicles in yes. stock right now. Yes. Let's take a look at some. Yes. 2006, ah, call for price. I want to see a price here because that's what's really kind of egregious about what's going on. Let's yes. see, can we do price? Let's do highest to lowest. That way we can actually get some results. Let's find something that's in the middle, in the middle, in the middle. Something maybe a bit attainable for, for more folks. Give me a second, Pops. Give me a second. Yeah, sure. Give we'll me a give second. you all the time you need. Page three. Page three. Okay. I like page three. You know, if we were in New York and this was the New York Post, we'd do page six. Gosh, but they got called for price. So the thing that Lawrence was able to actually uncover here, and we're just going to were some prices. Why don't we just use his example? The three Mitsubishi group. Mirages. Yes. Okay. These Mitsubishi Mirages, yeah, they, they, they've they, updated. I, they, I, you wow. know why? Because because of Lawrence's article. So look at this. So Lawrence, that's that's really awesome. I checked yes. it actually earlier this morning. They must have just updated. Yes. yes. So they had I these. I would have. Yeah. <laughs> so they had these Mitsubishi Mirages at thirty thousand dollars. Okay. Now these Mitsubishi Mirages, 2019, 2020 Mitsubishi Mirages were thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars brand new. Yes. With so no it, miles. And we know that used cars are appreciating. So let's well, take the VINs. And nothing has appreciated faster than a Mitsubishi Mirage. Absolutely. So let's take the VIN. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here and I want to see what the black book values are. Yes. So what's the odometer reading? This uh, one was 21,217. 21, yeah. And we're in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. 21217. Yes, so that's PA. PA. A, yeah. Generate valuation report. Yeah. Okay, so even on the retail market right now, yeah, that's, in great that, condition, and, and that's over. That's that's, that's over. In great condition. So, so I can't even begin to describe what kind of condition it would have to be in to be worth thirty thousand dollar asking price. That has to be like doubly great condition. That has to be like 
unflipping believable <laughs> condition. That's like, that that happens. That has to be beyond pristine. It hasn't even been built yet. Condition. <laughs> oh, and it includes two pounds of gold in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what it needs to be. All right, I, let me let me look back at at uh, the article here from Lawrence. He's got another one. Yeah, the used Chevy Spark. They yeah. have it listed at twenty five thousand dollars it has a hundred and seven thousand miles on it okay so you know maybe maybe if we're lucky it has you know it has another 10 or twelve thousand miles to go before it just explodes <laughs> they've got a used 2006 ford fusion that was listed at nineteen thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars maybe maybe this was all done on april fool's day maybe maybe this was all just no and the I, thing I, is they, i know they've got enough listings out there yeah John. That someone's going to come and show up and just buy it because they think, oh, that's what the price is. That's how car dealerships are up. Unattainable prices, prices that really should not even be advertised because they're so egregious. Someone doesn't come in there and do even, we're not huge advocates for like the Edmonds value, the KBB value, because a lot of those things, you know, they're not super accurate. And then yeah. also they're lead gen for dealers. Screw it. Do the KBB value on any of these and you should, you'll be more knowledgeable. It's un it's it's unsuspecting people that walk in and don't question these prices, especially on used cars. I, here, I, I will describe these people to a T. These are people that it goes like this: hmm. those that can afford to pay the least pay the most. Those that know the least will pay the most. That's who these people are. Yeah. Uh, either they don't have the um, tools to be able to do their due diligence and to get. Can, uh, additional background information to have a better understanding as to what the values might be. Yep. Or they just don't know how to do it, so they don't, and they go into these things blind, and they get taken advantage of. Yep. So that that's what it boils down to. If if you if you have a smartphone today, you could do enough research to know that th those types of prices are are unreasonable and and uh, and certainly not fair for anybody other than the dealer now i understand that that platinum used cars might have had to overpay okay uh for some of these cars like those mirages maybe 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 they had to pay like 12 grand each for one of those yep okay not not 13 grand not not 16 grand not 25 grand yeah um, so they're, you know, they, they have found a niche of, of buyers that they can take advantage of and they are, and it's unfortunate. That actually looks good right there. Well, I don't know that it looks good because, you know, no, yeah, I suppose it does. It. it looks like, it looks like, um, I'm, I'm sucking on a big ass cigar. Okay. No A words and no smoking dad. Okay, these are <laughs> I don't smoke. I quit, you know, to have children. And apparently it worked because I had two. <laughs> um, so there you go. So yes. be aware of the the kind of I'm gonna call it price gouging that's going on the, that in that the used car that, that right would now. definitely the prices that were listed prior to call for price. Yeah, uh, those prices were indeed that is price gouging. We've yes. got Lisa in the chat here. My mom got rear-ended yesterday and the other person ran. I hope her car is in total, but if you all have you all have prepared me to help her, Lisa, so sorry. Yeah, I see I see chat yes. messages and, here. And I do hope your mom's fine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And and Lisa mentioned that her uh, her mom is okay and they got the, the license plate. Yeah, so as you're going into the process, this is, do I want to buy a car? Do I need to buy a car? This is going to be an example of I need to yes. buy a car. Yes. And, and, and if there, you do, you know. There, the, the, if you do, there are ways to mitigate some of the pricing, okay? It's going to require much more work than it did in the past. Um, probably many more hours of, of uh, Googling things and, and phone calls and maybe even driving the dealerships and take a peek uh, on the forum first yes. like ask if anyone yes. knows a dealership near you I, yeah. I mean there was literally um I, I there was a comment yesterday or an email from i don't remember but but the customer was having a good experience okay yeah it was it was a customer that that is actually ordering a vehicle from and I knew the dealership before he even mentioned it in his comment from Avondale Toyota in Avondale, Arizona. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, once your car comes in and you take delivery, please go on the forum 
and post the dealer review so that justice can include it in his spreadsheet so that we have a bigger repository of good dealers that we can recommend to uh, people in our forums or on our forums. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lots yes. of love from Las Vegas. I'm a disabled veteran. Thank you for your service. And I've showed my other veteran buddies your channel. Well, Stephen, share it with your other buddies. Not yeah, veteran buddies. they don't just have to be veteran buddies, <laughs> yeah, although you. I suppose all your buddies are veterans because they've been buddies of yours for a long time. Um, and Malcolm, I saw your note and actually had that queued up. I'm going to surprise my dad with it. He doesn't know what it is, so we'll see in just a moment. Karen's got a question for you, Pops, yes. and then I want to pull up another story I want to talk about a little bit here. How do you handle when you share Black Book price and they say, nope, we use KBB or vice versa? So how do you handle that when you're trying to negotiate the value of your, your trade-in or your used car? Well, the, 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 the other thing I would do is, as you know, I always tell people to – try and get a value from CarMax or Carvana or Vroom. So you can use that as well to justify whatever it is that, that Black Book says. Um, and, and just say to the dealer, hey, I understand you prefer Kelly Blue Book, uh, but I understand that the vast majority of dealerships in the United States utilize Black Book when it comes to actually appraising uh, vehicles. That, and they use V-Auto. Yep. So throw out V-Auto. Uh, they, and they use V Auto so that they can ascertain what the uh, what the Mannheim market reports are that are uh, that that also guide them as to the true values of vehicles. And, but having a cash offer from one of the other players is, is even better than yes. any any book. Oh value. yes, yes. But it's just like anything; you have to try and defend your position and get them to try and defend theirs. Yep, yep. All right, I'm gonna answer Chris's question here and then move on. Oh, actually, one second, Chris. Jay Nagami. Oh my gosh. The Mirage has 78 horsepower with AC on its 60 horsepower. Well, you know, it's only a three-cylinder engine. So we filmed our first car review yesterday, um, thinking about putting some behind-the-scenes content here on the Reigns Act channel, and the actual reviews should start coming out in maybe like two weeks. we got to build up a little bit of a backlog. We have another one scheduled for tomorrow. Oh maybe I'll God. put the Mirage on our to-do list. Yes. Yeah. I, you know what? We why, should. Yeah, we should. I mean, legitimately, because like a lot of people buy them and like, yes. they're going to be some of the more attainable cars out yes. there. Yes. No, absolutely. I mean, you know, not that I'm looking to, to get into a, and out of a Mirage or even drive a Mirage, but I think it's important I think, that we, like, I think we should. I mean, you know, everything we do shouldn't be based on my comfort or your comfort level. It should be based on uh, what's most affordable out there for. Uh, for our viewers. Yeah, absolutely. And our members. This is from Chris. Hey, I'm looking to finance my first car and may not have any co-signer. Which car brand would I have the best chance with? That's a good question, Pops. Uh, well, it has nothing to do with car brand. It has everything to do with lending institution. Um, and it's going to depend. It's going to depend on many different things. Are you a recent college graduate? If you're a recent college graduate, then most of your captive lenders have recent college graduate programs and for for recent college graduate programs what it means is that they will they will look at you as if you were well established credit wise assuming that you don't have any negative reports on your credit history so if there's something negative on your credit history that's going to be a quick turn down yep. if there's no negative but you're a recent college graduate, they'll, they'll treat you as if you're and, top tier. And let's and if Chris isn't a recent college graduate, yeah. let's also hit on the fact that yeah. you do not need to rely solely on no, the no. dealership for your financing options. Yeah, so there's it's all credit comments unions. About, yeah, exactly. There's your local bank. Establish a relationship at a credit union. Credit unions uh, tend to do more for their members than any other uh, lending institution out there let's switch they're member based let's switch gears pops we had this story in automotive news today that's headline read five thousand fake employers flagged on car loan applications since 2019 there's a lot of fraud that goes on in this industry and this article is essentially talking about how that happens and what yes. happens you want to yes. give us a bit of a breakdown of what we need to know when it comes to getting loans approved well it's not what we need to know it's <laughs> it's obviously there are there are people out there that will provide uh, false and fraudulent means for people to be able to go and attempt to get a car loan um and and so yeah there there are uh lists of known fraudulent phony employers um and it just you know i i mean 
listen, car dealers get creative in what they do. Well, people buying cars get creative in what they do. Yep. I mean, I remember at our when I was in this when we were in Arizona in Scottsdale, I was at Scottsdale Acura, yeah. and we had we had these kids, literally kids. These kids were like in their late teens or early twenties, but they claimed to have a very successful online internet style of business. Kind okay, like and 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 they came in to buy an NSX and something else, and they had what appeared to be cashier's checks already made out, except it was just a fraudulent check of a made-up bank. Yeah. Now, I will tell you that my finance manager at the time looked at it and said, oh, this is great. I looked at it and said, this is BS. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, I instantly took the name of the bank and, and, and uh, ran it through uh, Google well, there was no such bank, okay? So you just, if something seems askew, it normally is. Yeah. If something seems too good to be true, it normally is. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you're a dealer and you keep submitting credit applications for people that really don't have jobs or, you know, aren't working for said employer, um and it's like, not the dealer's fault per se. It's the bank's fault for not doing anything to verify any of this before they say, yeah, we'll lend you the money. And I think the point, the reason I wanted to bring it up is because there's fraud on both ends. Like, and, it, and it's actually, you said it the other day on the show, you know, the salesperson's kind of trained that when the customer speaks, they're lying. When the yes. customer expects that the salesperson's lying. Yes. So it goes both ways. Yeah, I guess they, the the, point, the yeah. way it works is when somebody speaks, if their lips are moving, the other person's assuming that person's lying. You know, and and so you know, you you'll hear, and I've read in our comments, and and I and I and I gotta tell you, I mean, I I I heard it any number of times in the dealership, hmm. uh, and I probably uttered it any number of times. You know, well, when the customer said that, were their lips moving? And the salesman would go, "Yeah." I said, "Well, then they were lying." Yeah. Um. You know, and and the you know the the if it was a husband and wife. And um, and the and the wife said, "Well, that that sounds like a good deal with what he told us." And the husband would turn to the wife and said, well, "Were the salesman's lips moving when he said it?" And yeah. she would go, "Well, yeah, they were." He said, "Well, then he was lying. Nobody believes anybody." Yeah. Um, you know, but but it's 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 more the bank's responsibility, sure, to to try and verify these things before they say yes. And and. There's a lot of computer programs that banks utilize that just look at a credit score and and look at how long you say you've been on a job. Da, yeah, da, da, yeah, da, yeah. And the algorithm says, okay, that's approved. Yep. All right, let's switch gears one more time, Pops. This was My an article. God, we're, we're switching gears faster than, 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 than that, that GV70. GV70, eight speed uh, Eight speed automatic transmission could shift gears yesterday, which it did rather smoothly. So, this is something I did not queue yeah. up for you, but I want to run through it. And it was actually brought up in the chat just a moment ago. I saw okay. it and I didn't queue it up, but let's run through it anyway. Okay. Here are the automotive fads that need to die. This is from Jalopnik as well. I want to run through these fads and I want to get your opinion from on them. From okay? crap color choices to Supersized screens. Here are the automotive fads that you want to die. Now let's see if you agree. Okay. First one. Yeah. Low profile tires. Ultra low aspect ratio tires and huge rims on about everything nowadays. I call them wagon wheels. Our garbage infrastructure means that the uh, that any move toward a more comfortable ride would be well received by most drivers. So a shift away from ultra low profile tires and towards something with a bit more bounce would be a treat. What's your take on this one, Pops? Is that well, a fad that needs to die? I don't know that it needs to die per se, but I will say hmm. uh, that I know someone that had a car that had uh, low profile tires. And it was like every three months he would accidentally hit a curb and get a bubble in his low profile tires. Wouldn't even be a curb, it'd be like yeah, you just yeah, drive. Yeah. yeah, you hit a pothole. Yeah. It would do it. And um, so yeah, there are any number I mean, and and yeah, low profile tires are if if you want to be able to feel the pebble in the road that you go over, then yes, low profile tires tires are for you. Yep. Yep. If you want a little more comfort, uh, maybe not. All right, let's look at the next one on okay. the list. What's okay. Your take on this. <clears throat> raked rear ends. Ultra raked rear windshields on SUV, CUV wagons. This function of the trunk is completely lost, which makes the larger footprint a waste. I get the design choice, but functionally, 
It's terrible. What's your take on this? Well, uh, you know, this would be like your coupe versions. No, of, I understand. Yeah. I mean, because because if you put something in there and you don't realize how high it's sticking up, and you go to close it, well, you you just might be breaking your rear glass <laughs> window glass, um, and it and it does cut down on some of the functionality. Definitely. But my suspicion is the reason that it's done is it improves the aerodynamics of the vehicle, and it looks which good. helps which helps to improve the gas mileage of the vehicle. So you like this? But fad? of course, if we get to an all electric world, who'll, who'll care? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You like this fad? Uh, I like the look. Let's see the next one. Screen. Isn't, isn't that how the GV70 looked yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it GV's... looked And it looked good. Got it, yeah. It's got the yeah, rigs. Yeah, yeah. Screen rant. Replacing buttons with a touchscreen, especially for HVAC controls, what you used to be able to do by feeling buttons now requires you to go through multiple menus. You want to rant about this a little bit? Oh God, yeah. Uh, you know, I like you know, the one. The one nice thing about buttons hmm. is you don't necessarily have to. You know where they are if you've driven in in your vehicle for any length of time. You know where yeah, they are, course. and you can muscle just, memory. Yeah, and you can just touch them. Okay, but on these touchscreens. You know, either you have to scroll through it with with the eye drive or the wheel or whatever yeah. that, you know, or you have to touch it, and and it's like it's a distraction, and it takes your eyes off the road. Um, so yeah, no, I I mean, and I can tell you yesterday in in the GV seventy, not to give out any inside <laughs> information, but that was one of the least intuitive vehicles I've ever been in in my life. So I would much prefer. So as a fad, you want to see this one go? Oh, you absolutely. like physical buttons? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm. I, yeah, I guess I'm a tactile guy. All right. So then, look at this next one that's on the list, Dad. The gear shtick. Yeah. Reimagine shifters. We don't want a dial. We don't. We don't. We don't something shaped. We don't want something shaped like a computer mouse that doesn't move into each position. Just give us a lever that clearly that locks clearly into each position, so we know 100 percent the car is safely in and out of gear. This one again. Yeah. We have. We have. We're going to be driving more and more cars. Yeah. Holy crap. Yesterday, the amount of times that I thought I was using something on the infotainment wheel yes. in the GV70. Let me pull it up on the screen, actually. Like, it was insane, Dad. Uh, uh, infotainment. Let me pull up a photo. But, but I will say, huh. at least from my perspective, um, that the wheels definitely had different feels to them. I know you're saying that, but let me share. Well, they did. It was so – the number of times – Pops, I we know. were leaving the parking garage, and you were accidentally in reverse when you – I was. <laughs> so, like, this is in the Genesis. Yes. That's the that's the yes. gear selector. Yes. That's your infotainment thingy. Yes. The number of times that I was driving, and yes. I thought I was turning the, the menu, yeah. and I'm putting it into drive each time, fortunately, because I'm turning right. Yeah. Yeah. Not a huge fan. Much better than putting it in reverse while you're going forward. This is a good list so far. Yeah. Stupid grills. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, you know, and, and, and the stupidest is on the new BMWs that look like Bugs Bunny teeth. Yeah. Which ones are those? The new three? The, I guess it's it, the was, new... it was a new IX series. So they were coming up with a, a new, uh, let's see know. what happens. Yeah. The, 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 this. The, the, the worst there was a worse yeah there's one i mean there's there's a i mean it's just like what is that i mean the only thing i can think of every time i see this bugs bunny would be really proud of that wow yeah th those are some big bugs bunny teeth all right let's see what's next life of luxury what do you think this one means the idea that luxury equals tech most not all luxury cars are ju uh, are just sports sedans with leather seats and a bunch of gimmicky tech more focused on massage seats and lap times and refinement. I'm not that Thank old. Thank God it's lap times and not lap dances. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just thinking for the driver. That could be a problem. No, keep going with this one. No, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old, but I miss when luxury meant top-tier build quality, comfort, and isolation. The 90s S-Class and early Lexus LS, for example. We're going to be in a BMW. Sorry, we're going to be in a BMW tomorrow. I'm yeah. interested to see what that interior is like. Well, but it's a BMW M series competition, so yeah. it's it's probably much more sports. Yeah, that's true. Oriented than, but luxury probably full oriented. of tech as well. That like is also going to be confusing for you. Well, 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 you know, just about 
any car other than say a Mitsubishi Mirage will be will have more. Well, than just more. do that review. You're going to be like, holy cow! I love yeah. the Mirage. Okay, yeah. matte black everything. This is another fad they want to see. Die? Is that it? Uh, that's a Gen. No, that's an Aston. No, Martin. that's a. It looks similar. What is? I thought that's that, an yeah, Aston Martin. I, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's an Aston Martin grill. What is your take on uh, on the matte black push? You see this on a lot of the the more high end SUVs. Uh, the Aston Martin here, the Land Rover. Uh, I'm sorry, I happen to like it. I think it looks pretty cool too. Yeah, it looks yeah. really cool. It'd be a pain in the butt to take care of. But, <laughs> crossovers, okay. Pointless crossovers like the CX30, HRV, Q3, etc., have barely more trunk space than a hatchback, but comes with added weight, worse fuel economy, and handling and a higher price tag. I think the worst example in this category must be this thing on wheels called the Econo Box. Meanwhile, we can't get uh, we can't get the Focus anymore. Yeah, I actually completely agree with this. These small hatchbacks. Have you ever been? Well, in like these, a, these aren't hatchbacks. These are sorry, crossovers. Crossovers. Yeah. You ever been in like a Chevy Trax, man? Uh, there's not, no not room. You make me do a review. <laughs> there's no room in that yeah. thing. Hey, you know, I have been in the in in the uh, in the Acura ZDX, and there was no room in that in the back. Yeah, I agree with this yeah. comment though. This is like, these yeah. cars are not particularly functional. Um, well, are we buying them for function or looks? Crap, colors. I don't know if dye is the right word, but I'd like to see more paint colors than white, silver, gold, tan, gray, dark gray, and black. Blue, red, or any other color seem to be either off the table, unavailable within an X hundred mile radius, or you have to pay a ton of money to get them. You yeah. do. There are options. You don't mm, agree with this? No, one. not at all. Uh, that plastic uh, the cladding. Okay, yeah, that makes cars look a little more, you know, off-road, rugged. Yeah, except it's plastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean the 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 concept behind that of making your car look more rugged than it is, you know, which is which would be like me getting those those uh, those suits that make me look like I'm 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 buff, you know, make me look more buff than I am. It's just a facade, ladies and gentlemen, just a facade. Yeah, no, it it absolutely yeah. is. All right, final story for us to cover for today, Dad, was the IIHS set new guidelines. It just was, just was released this morning for, yes. quote, self-driving cars. Yes. It's fascinating. And even for partial automation, go ahead. Yeah. I, I've I've got I've got a guideline. All right. Ban them all. Really? Absolutely. We were in the Genesis yesterday, and it was driving Absol itself for a little Ban bit. Ban them all. Why? Because people will become distracted because they think the car will do everything for them. Which, you're, dri which? you're driving a car, wait, wait. which requires you to pay attention, not in and the to be a part of the process. Oh, I'm wait. sorry. You know, there's certain aspects of the future that I don't care for. And self-driving cars where where human beings abdicate their responsibility and, uh, and, and give that responsibility to computers and tech is nonsense, pure nonsense. It's folly. I'm sorry, I'm looking up the definition of abdicate. Wow, that's, a, that's an SAT word. What? To give up? Yeah. Yeah. Renounce one's throne. Yeah. Come on, man. You don't know this? No, what college is it? I didn't, I, you know, I made it to Indiana University of Pennsylvania, the Armstrong County campus in Catanning, Pennsylvania. I couldn't even get accepted to the main campus. Okay. You went to Pitt, for goodness sake. For one year. A year and a half. I'm trying to find it because I Three saw. Three semesters. I saw in the chat here, uh, there's a comment. I think that's supposed to say ban EVs too. There was actually a fascinating um, headline. It was from the CEO of Stellantis. Uh, did you see this article? He essentially said that that fed, you know governments nationwide, yeah, worldwide. global wide, yeah, worldwide, worldwide would do, or governments globally. Governments globally are the ones that are pushing EVs, not automakers, and they feel like their hands being forced in that direction. Um, I don't know if I know Tavares is, I think, his last yeah, name. Yeah, that was an interesting. That. No, that was an interesting, uh, yeah, an interesting article as well. Yeah. But pops on the on the uh, self driving piece or on the piece around automation, it is good that the IIHS is getting more aggressive in setting up guidelines. Hey, just to be clear, no cars meet the new guidelines that they put out there. But we need that. We absolutely need that because you see and hear stories of people doing reckless things with quote unquote self driving. Yes, we were in the Genesis yesterday. Has a very strong uh, safety package, an incredibly strong safety package. Yeah, quite frankly. I have no interest in buying a new car, but like Dara, my sister, your daughter, for example, has a 2011 Subaru yeah, Outback. Yeah, yeah. Her and her husband should get a new car just for all the safety things because that Genesis, we had all we had all of the notifications on. You're trying to change lanes. It shows you your blind spot in the uh, gear cluster. It makes noise. It has lights. You're trying to hit something. It'll st like 
there's a lot of things that's yeah but that's not dry that you know to, to have the blind spot indicator on the mirrors no, uh, no yeah to, or to let you know there's that a difference some, yeah, that's different than self-driving that's different than than yeah. taking your hands off the wheel which we did for a bit yesterday no which you did for a bit yesterday which i would never do um but it so so the safety aspects i i like the self-driving aspects should be banned. There should be, the guidelines should be, even though you think you can do them, you shouldn't. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Just because you can develop the technology to do it doesn't mean you should actually utilize that technology. So I, I'm sorry, you, 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 as a human being, you, you are not, you should not be giving up the responsibilities that you have as the driver of a vehicle to a computer. What You're smarter than that damn computer. Now, the computer can search the internet faster than you ever could. You know, like when you when you Google, I don't know, Chinese restaurants that deliver near me, you know, they can they can come up with that list a lot quicker than you can. Okay. But I don't need I don't need that same computer to drive my car for. Me. Now and we, I don't want it to drive my car for me. Now, we have one final news article that I, I can't believe I almost forgot to mention this. That it, it comes by way of Yahoo Finance, actually. Yes. This, uh, Swedish, oh, my God. This Swedish company. Yeah, the fastest growing Swedish automotive. That Yahoo. just so happens to be located in Bethesda, Maryland. Strange. Oh, my God. YAA launches a vehicle search engine to empower car buyers with industry insights. I know you haven't had a chance to read this yet. Can I, I have read not. It to you? Yes, please. Oh my God. Can I read it? Yeah. This is on Yahoo Finance? Yahoo Finance, man. All you got to do is like pay 500 bucks and they'll put it on there. Does it mention my name? Yeah, your name's in here. Oh my God. Read it. <laughs> your Advocate Alliance joined YAA.com, announced an all new car buying search engine. Also, if there's a typo in here, just don't even mention it to me because okay. it's already out. Yeah. Um, an all-new car buying search engine that offers consumers behind-the-scenes industry data. YAA Car Search features consumer-focused tools and insights, including total price and the data-rich YAA analysis with no advertisements or, quote, lead generation forms. Total price gives users a better idea of how much a car really costs. The total price is integrated into the primary information that is provided to the user when they select a specific vehicle. It takes the dealer's advertised price and adds in estimated taxes and fees so that the quote out the door price is reflected. This is all inclusive. This all-inclusive pricing feature goes a long way towards preventing surprises at the dealership. YA Car Search also integrates expert advice in each listing to help customers save time and avoid headache. YA co-founder and 40-year industry veteran Ray Shevska shares negotiation know-how and educates about dealer add-ons. Finance guru Kimberly Klein coaches users on how to avoid markups in the finance and insurance office. Auto industry researcher Mario Rodriguez enriches the user experience with explanations of how supply and demand affect effect vehicle pricing. YAA analysis provides industry insights that consumers typically don't have access to. Local supply levels are shown for each vehicle, which displays, quote, market day supply, sales rate, and, to and the total number of similar vehicles in inventory. The local comparison feature compares the selected vehicles, uh, selected auto listing with similar listings nearby. YAA Car Search provides users with the opportunity to explore YAA extended warranty products before going to the dealership. Users can also access the YAA community forum from within each car listing to get additional support. Premium membership to YAA gives members the opportunity to have a live chat with one of YAA's experienced car sales experts. Premium members also have access to advanced reports Supporting Black Book Trade and Valuations, one-to-one -one coaching, and YAA premium courses. And they you, spelled my name wrong. There is a typo. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, my God. You don't even know how to spell your last name. I'll be, I'll, you know, and your mother was a teacher. <laughs> anyway, that's our show for today. Thanks for sticking around. We'll be back tomorrow. It's going to be you and Miss Kimberly Klein. How's that sound? Well, I, you know, my guess is it'll probably be the three of us, actually. Just the you're, three you're of us. You're going to work it in this office. We can make it if we try. Just the, the three, three of us. us. Yeah. You and I and I. And I. Nope, that doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, let's call it a show. Thanks, guys, for being Thank here. Thank you, everybody. See you all tomorrow. See ya. <laughs>